So let's start our talk, our discussion about acids and bases with the very basics. That's almost a pun. <laughs> um, let's talk about the properties of acids and bases. And while we do that, when we talk about acids and bases, we should also consider some solutions that aren't acids and bases to be able to differentiate between really the four major types of solutions that there are. So, first of all, a molecular solution, really simple to understand. You know, on the periodic table, those non-metals that are found on the far right-hand side, when, when they combine to form covalently bonded compounds, in solution, those guys do not like to dissociate, well, into ions, because in order to be ionic, you have to be made up of a cation and an anion. And molecular compounds aren't that like water, and that's ethanol right there, and that's sucrose. Those guys, when they hit water, do not dissociate into ions, so they are non-electrolytes. They do not conduct an electrical current. That is a diagnostic characteristic of molecular compounds in solution. They do not conduct an electrical current. They are non-electrolytes. Everything else is an electrolyte. Moleculars are not. Now, some people say, oh, see that OH in there? That means it's a base. Uh-uh. There's some compounds that are written that look like they, they have an OH, and sometimes OH does mean base, but not if it's a non-ionic OH. And this is a hydroxyl group that's attached to an organic compound. When you see C's and H's and then O's attached kind of thing, you can be pretty sure that that's going to be molecular, unless it's a COOH, and that's going to be an acid. Hang on. Okay, so molecular compounds, non-electrolytes, generally speaking, colorless in solution. And when you put them into solution, into water, well, the pH of water is what is expressed as the pH of the solution. So those guys would generally have, yes, a pH of 7 because of the water that they're dissolved in. Now, a neutral ionic compound. Well, neutral means its pH is going to be 7. So if the pH is 7, what are those ionic compounds that are going to give you a pH of 7? Because a lot of negative ions are actually bases that they actually, in solution, will turn litmus a certain color, like blue litmus red, we'll get to that. Red litmus blue, we'll get to that. <laughs> but a neutral ionic compound is one where, and these, these where, one where you have this situation, okay? A group 1A or 2A element, now that's on the far right hand side of the periodic table, when you've got sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, lithium, well not really francium, but anyway, um, but when you've got a group 1A alkali metal or an alkali earth metal like calcium, strontium, barium, things like that, magnesium, those guys attached to these guys right here will give you solutions that are neutral ionic, that do not have anything other than a pH of 7. Now, and by the way, that's pH of 7 at 25 degrees Celsius. These ions here are actually the conjugate base ions to strong acids. And what that means is this. If you give these all an H to make HCl, HNO3, HI, HBr, HClO4, those are all strong acids. Strong acid means, well, I'll tell you in a second, they actually dissociate very well in solution. The conjugate base ion, or just the base ion, when you take the H positive off of the acid formula, you get these guys right here, and they are all neutral in solution when they're attached to these metallic ions, these alkali and alkali earth metals. You need to know those kinds of things, because in, in terms of, of, of understanding solubility, um, uh, and, and solubility in acids and bases. You need to know what are neutral species as opposed to basic species in solution. And you really need to know that because your teacher might ask you on a test, is sodium chloride going to be something that is acid, base, or neutral? And you're going to say, well, I know it's an electrolyte because it's ionic, so it conducts an electrical current, but it's sodium chloride. And a group 1A sodium with chloride, uh-uh, that thing is going to be a pH of 7. Now, acids. Acids are solutions that have a pH that's less than 7 to 25 degrees Celsius. They turn blue litmus paper red. So blue litmus paper in acid turns red. Blue litmus paper, acid red. Blue, acid red. B-A-R. When you go to the bar, you drink acid. Well, anything that's carbonated is actually acid, like, like Coke. When you go to the bar, you're drinking maybe just Coke. Now, here's the thing. So, um, Acids have pH less than 7, turn those litmus papers, like blue litmus paper, red, uh, certain color. Now, um, what about uh, other properties of acids? Well, acids actually are electrolytes, so they conduct an electrical current. 
What they also do is that they neutralize bases over here. That's a property of acids. Acids also react with active metals to form hydrogen gas. An active metal on any redox chart, remember when we, did, when we talked about redox chemistry or electrochemistry, 0, 0.00 volts is the hydrogen half reaction and that's H positive as an oxidizing agent. Any metal that is a negative voltage that's below that half reaction will react spontaneously with H positive which is acid. Okay, so the thing is, an active metal is something that reacts with hydrogen ion on that chart, left over right, to be able to make a spontaneous reaction. Acids also, now here's the thing, acids can be strong or weak. You can have a strong acid or a weak acid, and a strong acid is simply this, an H positive attached to any one of these, and H2SO4 as well, sulfuric acid. They're strong because, not because they're powerful, they're strong because they dissociate very well in solution, like 100% to be able to make an electrolytic solution, a highly conductive solution. Weak acids don't like to dissociate very much. They do dissociate. They do make H positive ion in solution, H positive ion in solution, and, 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 and create a, a pH that's less than 7, but they conduct electricity very poorly because they don't like to dissociate very much. That's why they're called weak. Not because they're powerless or something like that. It's just because they don't dissociate very much. Because really, you can have a strong acid that is very dilute, which would have a very high pH. But you could have a weak acid that's very concentrated and have a very low pH. Okay. So concentration and, and, and strength are two different types of things. Acids. By the way, large charge cations like Fe3 positive, Al3 positive, they can form complexes with water molecules that then dissociate to make H positive ion in solution. Large charged cations, metallic ions, actually are acidic. Now, that's going to come into play in a few minutes when I, when I talk about, or the next video, when I talk about definitions of acids and bases and how some definitions have been changed over the years because of the fact they have to incorporate things like weird things like this. Now bases are of course chemicals that have a pH that's greater than 7 at 25 degrees Celsius and bases are going to uh, neutralize acids uh, for, for uh, they're going to turn red lemon paper blue. Red lemon paper and base turns blue. RBB. Rububa. There you go. That's a good uh, mnemonic device. Rhythm and Blues Band, because in the Rhythm and Blues Band, RBB, you play a bass. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> basses actually then also have as properties uh, something, oh, <laughs> they taste bitter. Bases are bitter. When you actually take a base and you put it into your mouth, like, like something like, like bicarbonate of soda, which is also called baking soda, and you put that at the back of your tongue where your base receptors are there, your, your bitter receptors uh, uh, for your, uh, uh, what do you call those things there? Your taste buds. Yeah. Oh, man. You're, you make a face like, oh, uh, bitter is, uh. But acids are sour. So it's, mmm, mmm. Memorize those faces. Very important. And... Bases are also slippery to the touch. You put sodium hydroxide pellets into your hand, you go like this, you go, oh, slippery, and then you go, oh, burning, because of the fact that it's highly exothermic when it touches the water on your hand. Don't do that. Bases, of course, like I said, they neutralize acids, and um, they are, again, electrolytes. And for the vast majority of them, it's very, un, it's very um, 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 not very much seen, that bases are chemicals that are weak electrolytes. They are generally speaking quite strong electrolytes because most of them are ionic in character to be able to produce hydroxide ion. So let's go to some definitions now of acids and bases.